guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we are continuing my more in-depth makeup collection series and I figured the next most interesting category in my collection was my foundations. Without any further ado, let's get into my in-depth foundation collection and mini reviews. I have my foundation arranged into tinted moisturizers, so like lighter coverage foundations. These are both high-end and low-end. And then I have my more medium to full coverage foundations in these bottom three. And for those, I have them organized into low-end drugstore, mid-range to higher-end drugstore, and then my higher-end Sephora foundations. In my tinted moisturizer drawer here, I have five products. So I'm just going to go through each and talk a little bit about their features and what I think of them. The first one that we have here is the Andalus Naturals 1000 Roses Color Correct. This is in sheer nude, and it has SPF 30 in it, which I really love. I believe this is my only skin tint. Nope, the Bare Minerals one has SPF as well. This is more of a skincare brand, Andalou Naturals. I purchased mine at Whole Foods. It's definitely a pricier one. I really do like this. I think it wears really nicely on the skin. It's a much thicker formula. I'm not going to swatch and show you guys all of them, but it is a thicker formula probably the thickest of all of these skin tints, but it blends out really nice and sheer. Um, it's a little bit deep for me, so I usually mix it in with something else or go heavier with a lighter concealer. It's really nice if you're looking for something more natural, skincare benefits, and SPF. Next, we have the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid tinted moisturizer. This guy came out earlier this year, I believe, and I really, really do like this. This is in Fair 1N. I like the coverage that this gives. I like the way it sits on my skin, and it's definitely the best price out of all of these, and you get a decent amount of product in here, so I definitely would recommend the Pretty Fresh Skin Tint. Next, we have the Clove and Hollow Liquid Skin Tint. This was sent to me um, for a collaboration with the brand. This is in Zero too. Really nice um, tone for me. It actually it blends in really nicely with my skin. I've only used this two or three times, I believe, so I wouldn't say I know enough about the foundation or have enough experience to give a, any real thoughts on it, but I like the lighter coverage. Next, we have the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream with SPF 30, as I said. This is probably the most popular skin tint that I can think of on the market. Um, it's a very popular one for good reason. It wears really, really beautifully on the skin, and again, I love that added SPF. I really love Bare Minerals as a brand as well. I have a lot of favorite products from them. This is in Vanilla 02. Can't remember if I already said that or not. It's a little bit too dark for me, so... I would imagine if this is two, they have a lighter shade, so I'll probably go ahead and purchase that this summer, to be honest, because I really do like this one. I'd say out of the bunch that I have here, the Pretty Fresh and the Bare Minerals are my favorite, so would recommend this guy. And then lastly, I have the NYX Bear With Me Tinted Skin Veil. I have a full review on this guy. I have a full review on the Pretty Fresh as well by ColourPop. This is in Pale Light. Um, this one's a little bit the wrong tone for me. I found it a little bit off and it's just almost too light, which if anything, I rather go almost a tinge dark for my skin tint because I tend to wear them more in the summer and I wear them more sheer and bronzy. So it being a bit light, I don't love that. I definitely need to play around with this guy a little bit more. My second drawer here is my lower end drugstore foundation. So the foundations that typically cost like $10 or less, I would say, are the ones that I have in here. First off, I have the CYO Long Lasting Life Proof Foundation, and mine is in 101, which is just their lightest shade. I purchased this completely on recommendation of the Tayla here on YouTube. This is one of her Holy Grail favorite foundations. We can't get it in Canada, so I purchased mine when I was in Chicago this past summer. I absolutely love the way this foundation wears. I love the coverage, love the finish, everything, but the tone is a little bit more cool than I typically like in my products or look good on me. I'm definitely a true neutral. If anything, I would prefer to go a little warm rather than a little cool in my undertones. So I don't love the undertone of this, but as long as I'm careful with my concealer and my powder, 
powder then it totally works but as far as the foundation goes like the finish the coverage I absolutely love it next I have the Koki skin perfect HD foundation and mine is in 10w this is one of my absolute favorite foundations ever Koki actually sent me two backups of this both in 10w which is my shade I absolutely love it it's a really really good shade match for me and it's mid to buildable like mid buildable coverage and it's uh, one of my favorites to wear to work as well because it wears really nicely throughout the day and just works well with a lot of my other products so I love this one. Next I have the Koki Full Coverage Foundation and this is in 10W so it's the exact same shade. I don't like this one as much. I prefer the um, regular Skin Perfect HD rather than the full coverage one. I think I've only tried it the one time, maybe twice, so I definitely need to give it an another shot. Then I have the Catrice um, Liquid Coverage Foundation. This is the Mattifying Second Skin Effect 24 hour foundation, and mine is in 002 Porcelain Beige. Little bit dark for me, but I think the lightest shade would actually be too light for me, so I am totally okay keeping this shade. I absolutely love the coverage of the foundation. I think it blends absolutely beautifully. I love mixing in any type of like skincare oil in here, and then it gives me my ideal finish, and the coverage is just unbeatable. This is another one that I like wearing to work a lot. It's just a really good, reliable foundation, and it really wears beautifully throughout the day. Next, I have the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Hydrate radiance foundation with hyaluronic acid and this is a medium to full coverage this is one of my other favorite foundations of the bunch for medium to full coverage I think my two top two for lower drugstore and from this drawer in general the two I reach for the most would be the Koki skin perfect and then the conceal and hydrate the conceal and hydrate gives me just a little bit more coverage and the finish is a little more dewy luminous so it just depends on what I feel like for the day. This is in F1 so it is their lightest shade. Not sure what F stands for but yeah this one's in F1. I have a full demo and review on this as well I believe. I use this in a lot of videos so it's definitely one of my favorites. Highly highly recommend. The next foundation in this drawer is the Ordinary serum foundation this is a super lightweight very very thin liquidy foundation completely different formula than any of the other foundations in this drawer this one is in 1n I guess I do have a backup of this one as well same shade I bought this when I was at the Decium store in Toronto I decided to get a backup because this guy's running really low typically I'm not like a super low coverage girl but I absolutely love the way this looks um, blended out with a beauty sponge super light coverage but works really really well with cream products and I just think it's a really nice lightweight foundation. I really like the formula and I also really really like the um color match for me on this guy. And then lastly for this drawer we have the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation in Dewy. This is a, one of the most recent foundations to my collection. I did previously own their regular foundation, not the Dewy, just the original Photo Focus, and I did enjoy that one. I just really hate the smell of this foundation. This is in Porcelain, which is their latest shade, I believe. I tried this out in my most recent new at the drugstore video, and I wasn't a big fan, and I've only tried it that one time, so don't really have thoughts on this guy yet. So don't want to say anything because I haven't tried it too much. Moving on to our third drawer. This is my higher end drugstore foundation. So you have brands like L'Oreal and Pixie that are a little more expensive. First up we have the L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour fresh wear foundation. Mine is in 400 pearl. I absolutely love this foundation. It's a light buildable coverage and it just wears beautifully on the skin. I don't reach for this as much as I should but I really, really do enjoy it. Probably one of my favorite two. I have a top two in like every drawer. This is probably one of my favorite two from this drawer. I really, really do like it. Really good foundation. Next, we have the L'Oreal Pro Glow um, 24 hour foundation, and this is in 201 Classic Ivory. This used to be my absolute holy grail foundation. I've tried it in the last like month, and it's a little bit pink on me. I don't know if it's just oxidized and I've had it too long that 
could honestly be the case but the finish of this foundation is really really lovely I just don't love the tone as much as I used to but I love the formula of this foundation love the finish good coverage medium buildable it's really pretty next we have the Milani conceal and perfect two-in-one foundation this one is in 00a porcelain I picked this up earlier this year and I think since then I've only used it one or two times very thick formula and if I want a full coverage foundation I'd rather it be a thinner watery formula than a thick formula. There's something about this that just throws me off. I don't know if you can see there but it's very like chunky and gloopy and thick. It's almost like a mousse. It is so thick in consistency and it's a little bit off in tone for me from what I can remember but I definitely need to play with it again and experiment because as I said I think I've only used this one or two times. Next we have the NYX Born to Glow um, Naturally Radiant Foundation and this guy is in the shade Fair. This is my other top two favorite foundation in the drawer so the L'Oreal oops the L'Oreal Infallible and then the NYX Born to Glow are my two favorites from this drawer. I absolutely love this foundation. One of my favorites in my collection in general I would say wears beautifully on the skin medium buildable coverage good shade match for me and I just really really enjoy this I really like the concealer that came out a little bit after this launch as well I have a review on both the concealer and the foundation on my channel if you like a nice medium coverage and you like dewy luminous skin then you will love this I pretty much guarantee it's a really nice formula next I have the Maybelline matte and poreless for normal to oily skin this is part of the Maybelline Fit Me line and this is in 110 porcelain. I honestly don't know why I have this in my collection because I have very dry skin. I don't normally go for a matte foundation so I don't know at what point I bought this. I really can't remember my thoughts on it but I definitely need to try it out. It's a more liquidy formula. Um, don't remember the coverage so much but yeah I honestly don't know why this is in my collection. The next one is the Maybelline Dream Urban Cover. This this is a full coverage protective makeup sunscreen so it has a lot more coverage to it so that's why it's not with my other skin tints and SPF products this is in 102 fair porcelain I have a full review demo wear test of this on my channel I honestly don't think I've reached for this since I filmed that review or at least since last summer when it launched I do remember enjoying it but it's just not something that I reach for heading into summer that added SPF is definitely um, Oh, and it's SPF 50, not SPF 30. So this is the highest SPF that I have in makeup form. Obviously, I would still wear my normal SPF in addition to this. I definitely need to try this guy out again and like maybe rewatch my review on it. I tend to do that a lot and rediscover things that I had forgotten about. So definitely need to try this guy out again. The last foundation that I have in this drawer is the Pixie by Petra Beauty Bomb. This is their full high coverage foundation and mine is in number one cream this was sent to me by pixie for a video i did a full face of pixie and they sent this to me for that i think i've only used this one or two times for that pixie video and then maybe another time in addition to that so i don't really remember much what i thought of it i do remember being impressed by the coverage looking at it i think the shade is a little bit too orangey for me can't really remember enough on this but i have it. Now we have my last drawer which is my most expensive foundations slash I have like two drugstore foundations in here that just wouldn't fit in my other drugstore drawers. Definitely my foundation collection is skewed to the drugstore but I'm starting to get more into a higher end foundation so this is my higher end drawer. The first foundation in my high end drawer is the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation and mine is in Mont Blanc. I just picked this up in my recent Sephora order. I did decide to include it in this video just to make the drawer more full to be honest. I've only tried this once so I don't really want to give my thoughts on this guy yet. Then I have the Physicians Formula The Healthy Foundation um, Brightening Complex. I tried this once or twice and I believe it broke me out both times. I'm convinced that it did because I haven't reached for it since those occasions. Really nice coverage. I've heard it's a dupe for the Clinique 
conceal beyond perfecting whatever that one is i've heard it's a dupe for this they look very similar in packaging as well yeah i feel like there's something in this that breaks me out typically foundations don't break me out i never really find that but this guy seemed to irritate my skin so realistically i should pass it on but there was something about the finish and how my makeup looked those two times i wore it that keeps me holding on to it next we have the bourgeois um paris healthy mix foundation this guy i purchased at shoppers drug mart i can't find a shade name on here but it's pretty safe to assume that it is uh, the lightest shade in the range. Um, I absolutely love, love the finish of this foundation. I really like the coverage as well. The only thing is it's a little off tone wise for my skin. I want to say it's too pinky, but it does seem to be looking very yellow on camera. I just remember every time I wear it, I think the tone's a little bit off, but I absolutely love the finish of this foundation. It's called the healthy healthy mix for a reason it makes your skin look very healthy and plump and like really nice next i have the makeup forever hd ultra hd stick invisible cover stick foundation this is in y215 this is the foundation that i was wearing in both the intro and outro of this video because i'm currently wearing it right now as i'm filming i love this foundation with a brush i love it with my beauty sponge i used it with my real techniques sponge today and built up the coverage. It's definitely a medium to full coverage. This is my best foundation match that I've ever found in any foundation. It gives a very natural finish to the skin, not super matte, but the coverage is just incredible. I find it really easy to work with, very easy to blend in, and I just absolutely love it. Photographs super well and looks really nice on video as well. Now we have another stick foundation. This one's gonna be really annoying with my ring light. I'm sorry it's later when I'm filming this so I have to have my ring light on so that you can see what I'm talking about. This is the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation and mine is in cream. I use this in my most recent like glam get ready with me video i absolutely love this foundation it has such a flawless full coverage finish just looks beautiful and buttery on the skin um i'm a big fan of stick foundations just based on the hourglass one and the makeup forever one they are two of my favorite foundations in my collection i will always recommend them and i definitely think they are worth the higher price tag absolutely love this the last foundation that we have to talk about is the Dior Backstage Foundation. This is in 0N. This is a face and body foundation similar to the MAC face and body. Super, super liquidy in formula. The one that I would compare this to in my collection would definitely be the Ordinary Serum Foundation. This guy has just a tiny bit more coverage to it. It's a really nice consistency. I love using this for lighter coverage days. It looks beautiful on my skin when I don't have like a crazy amount of breakouts. I would definitely recommend this if you're looking for a nice lightweight foundation. And that concludes my entire foundation collection and mini reviews on each of the foundations that I have within my collection. Definitely be sure to give this video a thumbs up and do subscribe if you aren't already. Also, please comment down below and let me know what in-depth category you want to see next in my collection. I'm thinking either primer or blushes because those are two of my favorite, favorite products to play around with. As always, thank you so, so much for watching and I hope you have an absolutely awesome day. Bye!